then he can welcome us. Uh, and let's do uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. So uh, should we try unmuting ourselves and doing it together? Or? Probably, probably okay. One. All right, who's ever unmuted can do it with me. All right, <laughs> all right. And if you're not, you can do it quietly at home. All right, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United States, United States of America. America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, stands, one nation, one nation under, under God, God, indivisible, visible, with liberty, with liberty and justice, justice for all. all. So, and as my youngest son used to say, who, where, who are the four witches? Where are they? Okay, and now, <laughs> Donnie, um, can you um, do the uh, prayer? Is Bob still not with us? I'm, yes, I am. I am here. Oh, okay, Bob. We started without you. We did the pledge. You're good. You did a very fine job. We skipped your welcome. Is there something you would like to say? Um, well, welcome everyone. And now I want to ask Donnie Joiner to give us a blessing. Let us pray. All wise, uh, most heavenly Father, as once again, we would like to say thank you. Thank you for allowing us to assemble here this afternoon on Zoom uh, on this beautiful fall day uh, to conduct the business of the uh, historical society. Lord, ask it be thy will, please, to, uh, if it's thy will, have this meeting to go smoothly and very timely and be very informative to all those who are participating and who are listening in. And then when this meeting is over, Lord, we ask if you would bestow your blessings upon all your children uh, this day. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much, Donnie. Uh, <clears throat> next on our agenda is... Um, a nomination committee report uh, following the the bylaws we did form a nomination committee for officers and and directors um, earlier this this month and Mary Ellen is the uh, chairperson of that committee I asked Mary Ellen to give her nomination committee report at this time. Thank you. Okay, the nomination committee consisted of myself as chairman and Catherine Hoffman, uh, and I present the slate of nominees are, I'm reporting this to the membership, is Liz Fuller as president, Bob Surridge as vice president, and Catherine Hoffman as secretary. That is the slate of nominations. And then I will ask, is there, are there any nominations from the floor? And I don't hear any, so uh, our slate will be presented and voted on in January. Hey, thank you, Mary Ellen. Yes, sir. Are there any, any questions or, or, or comments? Okay. Um, I think you're gonna, uh, next on the agenda is a program review and discussion. And the subtitle of that is what we, what will we think of, of next? And uh, what we, we want to do is, and, and Liz will lead the discussion, but uh, talk about what we what we have been been doing and the types of events and act, activities, and then get, try uh, looking for some some feedback and and ideas from uh, from all who are in the in the discussion tonight. Uh, so a way that we can use this to in, improve our 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 programming. So I'd like to ask, ask Liz to, to begin that discussion, please. Okay, and um, so as Bob said, this is our 
Um, I'm just messing here a little bit. This is our discussion for the evening. Um, we are a small group, and so please feel free to um, interrupt me, interject, ask a question, make a comment. Um, that would be wonderful because we really are um, looking for um, feedback from you guys. So um, we, call, we called our, our presentation, uh, what will we think of next? And we ask that people um, bring their thinking caps to tonight's meeting because we want, do want to ask for feedback. And I gathered um, some photos of several Southport historic individuals wearing their own unique stylish thinking caps. So um, whatever style you brought tonight, um, I, I hope you did bring it along because we want to ask you um, some questions about, we want to explain what we've been doing, some of the reasons behind what we've been doing, and get your feedback on what you think we should continue doing, what other ideas you think we could be doing, because we've just about worn out our own thinking caps, especially in the past year and a half. We've worked really hard to come up with some creative ideas um, to deal with um, the, the pandemic, and we focused on three things. First, we focused on how to continue to bring Southport history to the community in fun and educational ways. Secondly, we focused on fundraising because we have not been able to do our traditional fundraising as um, I'll explain to you in a few minutes. Um, and then finally, something that Bob Surridge, our president, is always encouraging us to do, that while we can't do fundraising um, necessarily, we can do friend raising. So um, even though we're, we're challenged right now to, um, to, raise, to, make, to make, um, raise funds, you're gonna see that we have been focusing on raising friends, making friends. Um, okay. So one of the reasons that um, we're being challenged with fundraising is that for the second year in a row, we have canceled the Southport Christmas tour. And as some of you might know, this is our largest fundraiser and largely what supports our organization. It's a large percentage of what we, um, we exist on. But due to the COVID virus, virus last year, the original virus, and now the Delta variant this year, we just didn't feel comfortable asking people to congregate together in close quarters. We certainly didn't feel comfortable asking people to allow a thousand visitors to walk through their homes. Um, of course, if you're following the COVID numbers, you know that they are starting to come down in Brunswick County and that's really encouraging. And it's possible that it might have been um, safe enough for us to go ahead and do the, the um, uh, the home tour, but we do have to plan it months ahead of time. And we were planning it in the, the peak of the Delta variant. We couldn't look forward and see what the future held. And we really felt it was important to put the safety of our homeowners, our volunteers, and of course our visitors first. So I do wanna thank um, Carol Bailey, Travis Gilbert, Mary Ellen Watts Pool, Ingrid Crook, and Julie Newton for all their hard work on the committee. And I know it was a disappointing decision, but I still think it was the right thing to do. And we're all looking forward to next year and being able to resume it. So since we are the historical society, we do believe in looking to our past for inspiration. So I do want to remind us all that COVID is not the first pandemic that Southport has had to deal with. This photo here was taken of the Southport's Army Navy Club. It was taken during World War I. And I used this photo in multiple presentations before the pandemic to show what the Army Navy Club looked like. But it wasn't until we were in the midst of the pandemic that I noticed that this photo was actually taken during the previous pandemic of 19. 18. And I know that because I looked closely at the photo and you can see the guard at the gate is wearing a face mask and so is the woman sitting in the window looking out on the street. Now I think she's probably sitting in the window looking out on the street because there's very few people inside, um, both due to the pandemic and also to the fact that Fort Caswell was under quarantine. So by looking back at that, I think that we can take strength and inspiration from history and knowing that Southport survived a pandemic in the past and everything turned out well. And so we will um, follow suit and do that in our own lifetimes. So I'm sure you're all aware of all of the Zoom presentations that we have done since the beginning of COVID. We have done more than 75 full length, hour long or longer presentations, plus multiple short videos for special holidays and other occasions. They're all free. They're all on Facebook and YouTube for watching and rewatching. 
So last spring, the COVID numbers started looking encouraging. They started to drop and we got very excited about returning to in-person activities. But again, we did it with caution. Um, we opened up our jail two days a week. Um, we, did, we were careful because it is a small space with limited ventilation, because it's a jail. Um, we limited it to 10 people at a time. Everyone, including visitors, wore masks. Um, volunteers were all vaccinated. And we weren't sure how that, those cautions would be accepted by the community, but we were pleased to find out that we only had positive interactions. Everyone understood we were just trying to protect everybody's safety and it ended up being a positive experience for everyone. We also started some wonderful outdoor experiences where we combined historical tours with kayak adventures. So in the spirit of friend raising, we partnered with Adventure Kayak Company to offer these tours. Bob Surridge um, used to be a tour guide for them. So he is very experienced. He did three last spring and three this fall. Um, the last one for this season will be next Thursday. So if you missed out and you wanna participate, you can contact Adventure Kayak Company. And these were a wonderful way to enjoy nature and to explore history by visiting places you wouldn't normally be able to see and learning more about our community. And we offered them at a discount to our um, Historical Society members. And then we had our first in-person meeting. I think most of you were there in September since uh, it was our first meeting since the start of COVID last year. It was on the Garrison Lawn. It was perfect weather. Everyone had a wonderful time. We got lots of good feedback. And the Southport Shanty Crew came and sang shanty songs. Donnie Joyner uh, gave a short talk on Menhaden fishing and what it meant to Southport. And of course, the Menhaden fishermen were Southport's original shanty singers, and they sang uh, shanty songs to coordinate and to ease their backbreaking work on the Menhaden boats. And this picture is not all that easy to make out, but as you can see, these men are pulling on the nets, hardening the catch, and working very hard. And as hard as it to believe, they are probably singing. Uh, a shanty to, while they're doing it in order to coordinate their work. This is a picture of the Southport Shanty Crew. I do want to say um, the Southport Shanty Crew is not affiliated with the Southport Historical Society. They are um, a unique um, group, um, but about half of the members are also members of the Southport Historical Society, so we're pleased with that, and of course we have hopes that maybe someday all of them will be members of the Historical Society. Another um, friend of the society is Pat Kirkman, and she is past president and vice president and long-standing member of the society for at least 20 years. Pat writes a wonderful uh, Facebook blog, personal Facebook blog, called Stories Beneath the Silent Stones. So uh, she, in that blog, she shares her research um, and, and she has very engaging stories and beautiful photographs. It is her personal blog, but um, it, it shares a lot of information about the history of the burying ground and stories beneath the silent zone. So I highly recommend her blog for her stories. And of course we have um, our own Facebook page. We've continued to make full use of that uh, with daily historic photos and articles, as well as our own videos. Um, so I encourage you to, uh, even if you don't use Facebook, to check out our page and to check out Pat's page. And I think the last time I talked to Bob, we were two people short of 4,000 this morning. Bob, are we still, have we reached 4,000 or are we still two people short? All right, actually, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking right now. Uh -huh. I bet this, what we're streaming right now is probably adding followers even as we speak. We now have 4,000 followers. Woohoo! Okay, two more than this morning. All right, 4,000 followers. Uh, that's larger than the population of the city of Southport. Just want to point that out. <laughs> okay, um, so we've always been available for tours of the Bering Ground, the jail, walking tours of Southport. But what has changed is we've started being a little bit more forward and asking for donations for the tours. So when people have asked us for tours, we've started suggesting $5 per person for the tours. And we've actually found that people seem happy to pay that. And some people even donate more because they find the tours um, so enjoyable and interesting. So um, get the word out. We're available for um, tours for local groups like historical groups, genealogy groups, vintage ladies, book clubs. Uh, or even families that want to take a tour, uh, a private tour with, with other people. Um, 
so that's available. And in the same way, um, we also give speeches and presentations to various organizations and clubs. And lately we've been donating the honorariums from these speeches back to the Historical Society. So it's become another way that we're raising small amounts of money for the Historical Society. This fall, we were very excited to resume our Living Voices of the Past. We did have to cancel it last year um, because of COVID, but this year we felt it was safe because we were outdoors and people would move around in small groups. And so we had 10 historical characters come to life. Um, and you will see that I have some books on this page uh, and on the other page scattered around. That's because we're trying to raise awareness of the books that we sell. So if people are interested in the historical characters and the stories and they wanna know more, we're trying to say, oh, and you can find them in these books. And I don't know if Don Drabble is on the call, but Don organized uh, the Living um, Voices event and it just went so smoothly. It was just lovely. Um, and in addition, um, Julie Newton uh, was there. She spoke about her father, Art Newton. He was the first commercial artist in Southport. You can see Julie standing there, the, her parents' um, uh, tombstones, her father's picture and her sister's picture. Um, Art Newton uh, captured Southport during the mid 20th century when it was still a working fishing village and had an abundance of natural beauty. So here are some other um, paintings. So in addition to the book about um, Art Newton that Tommy Harrelson wrote, we also sell beautiful prints of his artwork. And those, we have about a dozen that are for sale in our online store. Um, they are printed as high quality G clay prints by Ricky Evans and they make beautiful uh, gifts as well as looking wonderful in your own home. So I just wanted to highlight um, Travis Gilbert and his portrayal of Captain Sonny Dosher, who was a lighthouse keeper on Bald Head for over 30 years. So Travis portrayed Sonny when he was a young man following the Civil War. He was a bit down on his luck at the time. And um, now Travis is also the executive director of the Historic Wilmington Foundation. So we usually see him in a suit and tie. So as you can see, he dressed a little bit differently for this event. And I just wanna say to me, he wins the award for being the most committed to his art because he portrayed Sonny Dosher barefoot. And he even went barefoot in the old burying ground. So I just wanna commend Travis for giving his, uh, this performance his all. This is something that we've started uh, using to encourage donations. It's called a dip jar. And we used it at Living Voices and at another recent event. And a lot of times we find that people wanna give us uh, donations when they're attending our events, but a lot of people don't carry cash or much cash. So the dip jar allows them to make a quick and easy donation with their credit card. So you might see this um, jar, this kiosk, um, around at when you're attending our events. And if you do, we certainly appreciate your donations. So 2021 is the 100th anniversary of the Wilmington Cape Fear Pilots Association and the Historical Society wanted to do something to commemorate the significant historical event. So we decided the most appropriate thing that we could do would be to clean the monument to the lost pilots of Smithville that's in the old bearing ground. It's dedicated to 10 pilots who lost their lives in two terrible storms in the 1870s. So we raised some donations and then we hired Carved in Stone Cemetery Preservation Services, which is a company owned by one of our members and they did a fantastic job at cleaning it. And then we planned a ceremony to remember those lost pilots and to honor the 100th anniversary of the Pilots Association. And we made it a point to use local businesses because we know that everyone in Southport is trying hard to recover from COVID. The ceremony turned out beautifully. Um, I hope most of you were there. The Boy Scouts were the color guard. Mayor Hayden gave a welcome from the city. Tommy Harrelson, who's the great grandson of one of the lost pilots led the prayer. Debbie Malachek presented a copy of her history of the Pilots Association to the River Pilots and the mayor. Uh, board member Mary Ellen Watts Poole, whose brother is a retired River Pilot was master of ceremonies. Cindy Sellers sang Peace Be Still, which was the same hymn sung at the original ceremony in 1879. And Captain Tommy Brendel, senior pilot, gave a speech contrasting the role of river pilots in 1879 to 2021. And it was fascinating to see um, how many things had changed and then how many things had stayed the same. 
Mary Ellen shared this beautiful scarf with a nautical map of the Cape Fear River from Bald Head all the way up to Wilmington. And she provided um, the little known history behind pilots favoring the color magenta. We sold copies of the book, Masters of Souls, written by Jim McNeil, brother of Miss Trudy Young and uncle to Captain board member Catherine Huffam. We also invited, in the spirit of fundraising, the Maritime Museum to sell their pilot mugs at the ceremony. So we got together, they provided the tent and the tables for all of us to use. And if you look closely, you will see our dip jar. Now this picture on the left shows the original 1879 ceremony with family members of the pilots standing by the monument. And then on the right, you can see the ceremony from the other day when we all gathered to lay a wreath on the monument. Now it's kind of hard to see in the original uh, photo, but they're standing in front of the monument and it's heavily draped in greenery and white carnations. So as you'll see, when I show you the picture in a minute, we use the same flowers and greenery for our wreath that we laid on the monument. So here is the monument with the wreath and individual flowers that people placed on it. And then the inscription on two sides of the monument, monument are written on the slide. One side says the wind and sea sing their requiem and shell forevermore. And then the other side lists the names and ages of all the lost pilots and from 1872. This is a picture of Trudy Young placing flowers on the monument. She is related to three of the pilots who died in 1877 and um, the families that you saw in the older photograph of the monument dedication. Um, the other two sides of the monument list the five pilots who were lost in 1877, the pilots and crew of the Mary Case Front. Um, and then the final inscription says, this monument is erected by many citizens sorry, many citizens who regret the untimely death of these pilots, but in the faith, who in the faithful discharge of their duty were suddenly called to meet their God. Here you can see the contrast before and after cleaning. And um, this doesn't, the cleaning didn't just make the monument look prettier, it also will help preserve the monument for the future. And if you haven't seen it, I suggest you make a stop the next time you're near the old burying ground because it really is something to see. So another activity that we've resumed is the firing of our cannon Thor for special events. Thor can be hired for weddings, funerals, graduations, and other events. Um, the cannon crew does an excellent job of focusing on safety for everyone involved. Um, a new fundraiser we're working on is a joint venture with the Fiber Arts Program of Brunswick Community College. So we had 60 quilt kits. You see the pack them all packaged up there in the upper right-hand corner. Um, local crafters purchased those quilt um, those kits and then made quilt blocks out of them. Um, all 60 blocks have been claimed and are currently being worked on. We've actually gotten a few back in and they're just wonderful. Um, the blocks all incorporate images of historic Southport landmarks and those images are from two coloring books that we sell in our stores, um, created by local artist, Pat Carney. Marilyn Ridgeway, who runs the fiber arts program with, at the Brunswick Community College is um, uh, partnering with us on this project. She will have her students put together the quilt blocks in, uh, and turn them into two large quilts. And then those quilts will be raffled off during next year's Winterfest. So not next month, um, coming up that Winterfest, the one in 2022. So the quilters all have until the end of the year to get us back um, their quilt blocks. Then Maryland students will be putting them together into um, two big quilts. And then uh, we will be showing them somewhere. We haven't worked the details on that and um, selling raffle tickets and raffling them off next year in the Winterfest. And the proceeds from that will be split between the Southport Historical Society and the Fiber Arts Program for the Brunswick Community College. Um, Southport Historical Society also regularly partners with the John N. Smith Cemetery Restoration and Preservation Society. In the past, we um, We've given some donations for signs and um, various endeavors that they're working on. We also provide um, research. We, we do writing, um, grant writing. We've um, helped with the, the writing for the, for the National History Registry. Um, 
And so recently they held a celebration for being placed on the National Registry of Historic Places and the opening of their outdoor museum. Um, unfortunately, due to COVID, there were some supply chain issues and their permanent signs did not arrive in time, but they put their thinking caps on and they came up with a good solution and they used temporary signs during the, um, the celebration. And uh, I know the permanent signs will be out there not before um, too long and we will keep you posted on when that is so you can do a self-guided tour of the cemetery. We're also involved in a fundraiser with Up Your Arts to help save the historic Brunswick County Courthouse. This building also served as Southport City Hall for a while, so their uh, initiative is called Save the Hall, y'all. Um, uh, Southport Historical Society member Ginger Harper, she recently remodeled her historic house, it's over 100 years old, and another society member, Fred Fiss, was the contractor, and he um, noticed that she was getting rid of about 19 doors and he suggested that she consider donating them to the Historical Society. So then we contacted Up Your Arts to see if they would like to collaborate on a project in which local artists turned the doors into meaningful work of, works of art. Um, and so since we didn't have funds that we could contribute this year to their cause, um, instead we donated doors, time, and talent. So Bob Surridge found the perfect quote for the theme of the project, which is called Southport, Open Your Doors. It's meant to celebrate the end of COVID and to encourage people to open their doors and rejoin the community and to get beyond this period in our life. So the quote um, from Maya Angelou is, my mission in life is not merely to survive, but to thrive and to do so with some passion, some comp compassion, some humor and some style. And so as you can see, the artist embraced the theme. These are the doors, um, the completed doors. They're just incredible. They demonstrated passion and compassion, humor. And this one, I just have to comment on this one. Um, this door is the artwork, as you can see, it's old baldy. It's composed completely of um, cigarette butts. And you may wonder, well, where did she get all those? Is she a chain smoker? But actually she, um, she collected 5,000 cigarette butts in, uh, in the marshes and the beach and around Southport. Um, she cleaned up 5,000 cigarette butts. She's part of an organization called the Marshmallows and they do go out and pick up litter, large litter, small litter, um, left over from the hurricanes and then also just from people littering. So she picked up 5,000 cigarette butts. She used 2,000 in the execution of this artwork. And even though it looks like, you can't see in this picture, it looks like that, so those butts could just fall off of there. She actually has the whole thing uh, encased in epoxy and it is totally sealed. And as she says, she sealed in the gross. So it's just left as a beautiful um, work of art composed entirely of waste, really. Um, and then, um, as we said, passion, compassion, humor, style and so as you can see they they really encompassed it all and um, this is the final door by um, Mary Beth Livers and she actually um, turned the door um, horizontally and turned it into a table that could be uh, that has quotes on it and recipes and people can gather around it so really embrace the the idea of opening the doors into the community. The doors are currently being displayed at 11 local retail shops in Southport so be sure to, to go there and see them all. In January and February the doors will be displayed at local nonprofits, including uh, there'll be one in the visitor center at the garrison and then in March they will be auctioned off and all the proceeds from that auction in March will be going toward the restoration of the county courthouse for Up Your Art. This is looking through one of the doors at the uh, gala that we had. Um, this is, um, these are the locations of the doors right now. You can get the same information off the Up Your Arts um, Facebook page. Um, but here are the locations. More details will be forthcoming on the project from Up Your Arts. Southport Historical Society is now rolling off this project after the first phase is done, but we very much enjoyed working with Up Your Arts um, on the first phase and we wish them much success on the rest of the project. So in case you're wondering, the rest of the doors, I did say they were 19 doors, 11 artists. The rest of the doors um, went to the historic Wilmington Foundation for their legacy architectural salvage. So we appreciate um, their um, taking the doors. 
And I would be remiss if I didn't mention the 12th annual Wooden Boat Show coming up this Saturday. It's going to be all day. Um, they weren't able to hold the boat show in person last year, so it's very exciting that it will be back in person this year. You can get more information about it on their website. Um, but one tidbit I will share is that the Southport Shanty Crew will be there singing. Um, we are continuing our commemorative brick program, selling bricks between now and the end of the year. People are buying them um, to commemorate weddings, anniversaries, graduations, businesses, um, organizations, their move to Southport, um, with their move away from Southport, and of course, departed family members and friends. Um, some local realtors and other business professionals are giving them as gifts to their clients to make a wonderful client for the person who has everything. Um, Mary Ellen Watts Pool does these delightful short videos. As you can see, the clips of those on the left, um, they, she tells about the bricks, she tells a little bit about the history of Southport. They're really charming and entertaining, and those are on our Facebook page, so check those out. I also want to mention, um, tonight's meeting was actually supposed to be on the 18th. Um, I appreciate the people that were able to rearrange their schedule and come on the 4th. Um, the reason that we changed it uh, was to allow our members to attend this play that is going to be only one night in Wilmington on the 18th. It is a one-man show based on uh, David Soselsky's book, Fire of Freedom, and it tells the story of Abraham Galloway, who was born into slavery right here on a Smithfield plantation. He eventually escaped bondage. He then became um, a master spy for the Union Army after the, the war started. And eventually he became a North Carolina state senator. So very interesting life story. Um, tickets, I believe on the night that they're there, David Soselsky is going to be doing a Q&A afterwards. Not 100% sure about that. And the tickets are on sale at the Thalian Hall website. So that is November 18th. We have three more Zoom programs coming up this year. On November 9th, um, on our second Tuesday talk, Claire McNaught is going to be talking about Moravian Christmas traditions. Then on December 7th, Desiree Bridge, our board member, is going to be doing the fourth in her four-part series of seasonal plant lore. She's going to be talking about winter plants. And then on December 14th at 1 p.m., um, Desi is going to be doing the second Tuesday talk for December and she's going to be talking about Victorian Christmas traditions. So you get both Moravian and Victorian Christmas traditions as well as plant lore. And I also want to point out those wonderful fancy thinking caps that those Victorian ladies have on. Um, we are selling Christmas ornaments um, and our uh, online store and in the in the visitor center. These ornaments were created by Southport artist Ricky Evans. Um, we also have other items that are great for gift giving in our online store and in the visitor center and um, if in case you're, you're interested in giving a Southport present. I want to thank everybody. This was a very photo intensive presentation so I want to thank all the people who contributed photos for the presentation, all the wonderful photographers as well as uh, the Stateport Pilot for sharing their archives and the Susie Carson Research Room. And I have one last photo of Southport historic residents with their thinking caps on. And then I'm going to take it back to, um, to you guys. I hope that, I know this has been a lot to take in, but um, I'm hoping you've been thinking about what we've been doing. We'd like to ask any suggestions you have, any comments, any ideas for fun programs you'd like to see us pursue, any possible fundraising ideas you might have, any, anything you'd like to say at all. So I am going to stop sharing and be able to see you guys. All right. Too much light. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Anybody have any um, thoughts, comments, suggestions, critiques? <laughs> we welcome it all. You gotta take yourself off mute though. Got a thumbs up from Donnie, that's good. Anybody else? Um, all right, well, give some thoughts. Oh, Pat, you got something? Well, I just want to say um, congratulations to everybody who's done everything that uh, you went over. 
uh, in the program because it's been amazing what the society has been able to accomplish under the restriction of COVID. But um, it's so um, wonderful that we could continue through the technology that some of you have been able to figure out and that some of us who can sit in our homes and be a part of um, what's going on. Um, having been in this society now for nigh on 25 years, um, I think back on some of the things that we have done in the past and then look at what has been accomplished in the last year or two. And my head's just swimming with all of the, the things that the society has accomplished throughout these years. And um, it's hard to really think of something new or something different. And perhaps one of the things we can do is to go back and revisit the um, Whittler's Benches, our, our newsletters that we have. Uh, and we have them all from the uh, very beginning in 1976 when the um, society was established, thanks to Pauline Swain, who kept every one of them. And then when we went electronic, of course, with the Whittler's Bench, we've been able to keep those in our archives as well. But I think that um, some of us going back and looking through those and reading about some of the events that happened, things that uh, we have done over the years that might be worth a revisit uh, to do that. I'm remembering particularly a time we did um, Kate Stewart Day and um, uh, talked about her life uh, over at the Episcopal, Episcopal Church and then down to the cemetery, similar to what happened this uh, weekend when the crowd moved uh, in that direction. And then we had uh, lemonade and pound cake down on the waterfront as close to we, as we could get to her old um, boarding house. Um, but that brought a lot of people out and it highlighted that one person. Um, we also did River Pilots Day, which is very similar to uh, what happened this weekend. And we had the intention of possibly doing at some point either Joshua Potts Day or Benjamin um, um, Smith Day. Um, so those are some things that we might can think about in zeroing in on maybe one uh, historical figure from our past or um, one event that may have happened. I think um, maybe looking at um, more of the, perhaps the shrimping um, industry. We've done Menhaden, we've, and of course, Mary Ellen did a great job with the uh, uh, charter boat uh, uh, business here. But I don't think we've ever had a real focus on the shrimping and how important that was and maybe bringing um, back some of the folks who um, were active in that. Um, of course, I know that we missed the home tour greatly and uh, that was always so much looked forward to, but perhaps we could persuade a few people to do a mini house tour at some other time during uh, the year, maybe in the spring. Uh, and if anybody wants to interrupt me, feel, please feel free. But I'm, on, I'm rolling now. <laughs> but another thing that had um, come up um, several years ago that we talked about in board meetings was perhaps having a um, history on the porch event in the spring when people um, open their porches again in, in the uh, historical area. And also um, uh, the yards are decorated, the flowers are blooming, that sort of thing and to have a historical figure on each porch, just to give a brief uh, talk about um, themselves in based on history um, and uh, a way that we could have people walking around the neighborhood and enjoying uh, the beautiful houses, maybe with, with tour guides as they go along to talk about um, what they're seeing. Um, and uh, so it goes. Uh, there are certainly um, many ways we can look into our 
look back into our history, but I think we just kind of need some prompting and perhaps that will come as we look back at some of the things over the, the last um, 40, almost 45 years now that the um, Historical Society has been in existence to see if we can um, capitalize on something that's happened in the past that we've kind of forgotten about. So I there. Good. Didn't you tell me one time that um, you did some teas maybe? At, we did. Um, oh, that's a good idea. We had a wonderful program uh, in the spring and it was a ladies tea party and we did exclude the men uh, and it was just for women and we used the, um, um, oh, tell me the B&B &B right downtown. Lois, uh, Lois Jane's? Uh, Yes, Lois Jane's. Lois Jane's um, was the host house for that. Uh, and we had the tea set up in the dining room uh, there. And then um, we were on the lawn there. You know, they do have that nice lawn. Um, and that might be something we might consider uh, again um, and have some of the um, uh, local restaurants or merchants um, be involved in tea things that the ladies might be interested in in the um, springtime and wearing thinking hats. <laughs> and, uh, so. I don't be thinking after tonight they can just be fun hats. <laughs> okay <laughs> but uh, hats. yeah that was very successful and we did have several um, of our ladies who were dressed as some of the historical ladies who were mingling around um, at the tea that time as well. Yeah. Those are some great ideas. And, and we should also, like you said, go back through the, I love looking through the old newsletters. And so that would be fun. Anybody, <laughs> anybody else have any, any thoughts? Hi, Becky. And it's just a point of uh, reference. You mentioned shrimping. Next year, the wooden boat show focus for our banner and our video is going to be on shrimping. Okay. Oh, great. It good. was supposed good. to be this year, but yeah. I decided okay. not to try to do it this year. But I've, I've already we've interviewed Jimmy Moore and have that taped. And then I have already started working on it. It'll be basically using his and May's book on shrimping. But if there's anything we could do as far as the Wooden Boat Show working with the Historical Society in any way, we're more than happy to do that. Great. Wonderful. Thank you. That's, well, that's We're also working with the Maritime Museum very closely, and I don't know if any of you's had a chance to see it, but um, the banners that we've done so far and the videos are on display at the Maritime Museum right now. Oh, and nice. we're talking about ways to incorporate those more year-round with the Maritime Museum. That's great. That's wonderful. Uh, just to comment, I went in there Saturday uh, and saw those, uh, the shrimping, the information that y'all had put there, and it was really nice. They're a lot of work, but they're, mm -hmm. <laughs> they're yes, good to have. I'm sure. uh, well, maybe we could just have a big, um, that, that'll be in November of next year, and and um, with with the um, wooden boat shows um, capitalizing on their shrimping, that the historical society perhaps could uh, use the fall months, uh, September, October, November, maybe to highlight the fishing industry. And uh, we could have a big, the shrimp boats are coming, they're coming tonight. <laughs> and so maybe we could um, do that because that was a big part of our history um, in the, uh, in the early, well, mid 1900s, yeah, yeah. That's great. All right, well, there, good ideas. There, Go ahead, I'm sure there are still family members like from the Hardys or, or the um, uh, other fishing uh, industry people who might be, um, uh, Catherine, I don't know if any of your folks were were they all in the Menhaden? Did, did they get you're, into you're the? On, you're on mute, Catherine. Uh, we Actually, can't hear you. 
Am I unmuted? No, you're good. You're, oh. Oops. Okay. There you go. Now, my great grandfather had a shrimp canning business at the there foot of go. Brett Street. And there's an article about him, and I've forgotten the man's name from New York. It's a man from New York came down here. He was very interested in the shrimping. And actually, they started shrimping in the river. And that was the first time they had caught shrimp there. Um, and they would ship the shrimp up to New York. And there's a story, I saw it somewhere, I'll have to look for it, about him sending the shrimp up there and they thought it was the best shrimp they'd ever had. They, they, they yeah. thought it was better than their shrimp. So, yeah. So. Well, yeah. And of course we have the Potter family mm -hmm. here in town, uh, you know, to um, help us with some of the history of that too. I always, I always found it kind of amusing that uh, <clears throat> folk, folks around here wouldn't eat the shrimp because it was bait. Yeah. But, they, but they were certainly willing to, to sell it to those Yankees up in there. <laughs> right. Oh, they'll eat anything up there. Yeah. <laughs> they don't know. I, yeah, I just read something recently. They were talking about shrimp following people's nets. Like they were trying to get, they would be irritated that the shrimp would come up in the nets and have to get rid of that because mm. before they were shrimping. So we do have a couple things planned for next year. Uh, just to mention briefly, we've got you know, we're collaborating with um, uh, the the Black History Symposium in, I'm sorry, I lost the name for a second, the, in February with, with Donnie. Um, and we are um, planning to put together, put on an original performance with Carolyn Evans portraying um, uh, Anna Clemens, um, Southport's own Anna Clemens, who was uh, what we're calling Southport secret suffragist who um, tried to get voting rights after the 20th, um, the 19th Amendment was passed in, in 1920. So we are trying to put that together. It's a big, it's not a, again, it's not a fundraiser, but it's a fundraiser. Um, but we hope to be getting um, some um, activity in the community based on that. And, and in the same, like, again, not a fundraiser is um, in March, we'll be celebrating the 80th anniversary not celebrating, commemorating the 80th anniversary of the sinking of the John D. Gale, um, which happened uh, March 12th in 1942. So we will be putting both of those things on. Again, not, not to raise funds, but to, um, to raise our, our friends, our connections in the community. So we do have those planned for next year um, right now, or we're in the planning stages for those right now. Um. Let me ask this question, Bob, Liz, board members, uh, several of you there, board members. Um, since I'm not on the board anymore right now, um, I'm not aware of where we stand financially. How are we doing since we have not had um, the home tour last year and we're not looking forward to having it this year? Um, uh, generally, are we in good shape? Are we desperate? Do How much do we need to do in fundraising or have we kind of sustained ourselves just generally, I know you don't have any specific figures there, but w what's the general feeling about money? Well, as you know, Pat, we, we did have a good um, a good cushion. Um, oh yeah, I remember <laughs> <laughs> a rainy day fund. We were using uh, our rainy day day fund, and the other thing that happened um, twenty last year, we expected to have a a sizable sizable deficit. And as, as we got moving with the uh, using Zoom and having a, a program and maybe two programs a, a week, uh, things really took, took off. And you know some of, the, some of the impact of that was our membership in, increased from, help me out, Mary Ellen, from, from two, 230 people to close to now close to four 400 yes as of today we have 382 members mm -hmm. and if i could say a plug for that uh folks if you want to send in your dues for next year you can start sending them in now <laughs> and uh they'll just be credited for next year or just go ahead and bite the bullet and become a life member and you don't have to pay the dues every <laughs> every year. That's, <laughs> That's right. the easiest thing to do. <laughs> yes, it is. So we had an increase in membership, we had an increase in, in, in donations and that's carried 
as Mary Ellen's demonstrated, that carried forward through this, this year. Although, let me, frankly, no, it did not, uh, we did well, but not as well as the Christmas home tour uh, right. by, a long, by a long shot. But we're, we're good. Good. We're, good. We're, I mean, we're not going anywhere, right? <laughs> another another thing that really helped too was the the brick program, which Mary Ellen is uh, was in charge of last year and, and this year, um, and her, especially her. I think really her her videos. Um, I've been great. Everybody everybody knows her videos. Mary, and Mary Ellen. Mary Ellen broke a record last year in the number of bricks sold, and she's going yes. to surpass that this year. She told me she would. <laughs> she's not, and she's on track for it. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's that's helped too. I mean, even but both of them combined, we're not not anywhere near what we make on the on the home tour. So, um, but I, you know, I, I I we just don't know what's going to happen. But it'd be nice to have. I also think it'd be nice to have a few things that we do so that all of our funds are not dependent on mm -hmm. one one thing. Go. Um, so we'll be looking for those um, those things next year so well we don't want to get maniacally focused on fundraising as as bob points out friend raising and we really friend raising is our niche we're good at raising at, at just you know partnering with people and being friends and just we just need enough money to be able to do that so um these were some good ideas though to pursue some good activities and um we will um start looking at those for next year Anybody have any other comments, suggestions, anything? All right, thank you so much. Bob, you wanna take it back over? I'm done with my presentation now. Okay, thank, thank, thank you, Liz. And, and thanks, thanks to everybody for, for coming and for your, your suggestions and, uh, and in, encourage, encouragement. Um, it's, it's, we've had, we're at, you know, the thing is, we have a good time doing this, <laughs> yeah. and uh, we want want you all to join us and everyone to join us in in uh, having a, a good time time with us. Uh, it's it's just been um, it's been quite quite an experience, and and we're very, you know, I'm very proud of everyone and the things that we have 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 done, um, and look to look to continue on on the future. So thanks for thanks for your help and attention. I Thank will take a motion to adjourn if anybody wants to uh, venture that. Oh, I see Mary Ellen wants to adjourn. Adjourn. Yes. All in favor, wave your hand goodbye. Okay. And Bob, could you and Liz stay on?